Every popular series has its own special ability that can completely change the tides in an instance. For example, Ichigo has. Itachi has. Luffy has. Anyways, for all of us watching, we have been blessed with Ryoiki Tenkai. The domain expansion, or in Japanese, Ryoiki Tenkai, has already become an iconic phrase within the new gen of Shonen. This ability would simply be seen as the ultimate game changer within a battle. The best example of this would be when Gojo overpowers Drogo's domain expansion with little to no effort and reversing the situation in a blink of an eye. <laughs> This series has gifted us with an abundance of domain expansions, but we will be deciding which of the following 12 make it into the top 5 most powerful domain expansions in the entire series. This will definitely cause a lot of drama, so just sit back and watch me get sucked into a domain where I'm forced to rank these insane game changes. So to kick things off, at 5th place would be Mehito's Self Embodiment of Perfection, or in Japanese, Jihei Endonka. <laughs> I understand you guys might be thinking how this is not even in the top 3, but just hear me out. Mehito's domain expansion is incredibly powerful as seen in his battles against Yuji, Nanami and Mekomaru. Essentially what the self embodiment of perfection does is create a separate space in which Mehito's curse technique, idle transfiguration, becomes a sure hit ability, meaning it will definitely affect the victim trap within the domain. What we understand about Mehito's idle transfiguration is that he can only transfigure the shape of your soul if he is able to get a single touch on you, however inside of his domain, Mehito doesn't even need to touch you. Hey yo, what the f Anyways, it guarantees the effectiveness of his curse technique, as it will then allow Mehito to transfigure your soul in any way, shape or form. So in other words, if you don't either have a simple domain at your disposal, or a domain expansion that can outpower Mehito's, then you might as well say goodbye to your life. Of course, the self embodiment of perfection does have its weaknesses. We already went through the first two, but we witnessed in Mahito's battle against Yuji and Nanami was how Yuji is an anomaly. Due to having Sukuna within him, this then renders Mahito's domain expansion useless, mainly because Mahito would touch the soul of Sukuna's, and we all know how that ended. But it seems Mahito did in fact find a loophole to this, and that would be through using Gojo's method of only activating it for 0.2 seconds. When Mahito activated his domain expansion for 0.2 seconds, he was able to do effective damage to Toto and Yuji without feeling the wrath of Sukuna, since 0.2 seconds would be too fast for the King of All Curses to react. So why exactly have I ranked Mihito's domain expansion as 5th on this list? The most obvious one would be the fact that it has its nimble weakness of not being able to comprehend a soul on the level of Sukuna's, which makes sense. Another reason would be because there are definitely 4 other domains on this list that can easily overpower this in a blink of an eye. I'm not saying that Mahito's domain is weak, it's just unfortunate that there are other domains which are in a whole different level. At 4th would be Kenjaku's Womb Profusion, or in Japanese, Taizo Henya. This is a domain expansion we still don't have much information about, however just like Sukuna, Kenjaku needs no barrier to execute his domain. It would be in chapter 206 where Kenjaku would completely baffle both Master Tengen and Yuki upon summoning his domain expansion. Master Tengen would state, Sukuna demonstrated this domain in Shibuya. It is an amazing feat in which he opens his domain and activates a technique without closing the barrier. Even after activating her simple domain, Yuki was struggling as she goes on to say, what a powerful barrier, it's stripping away my domain. As Yuki does all she can to close in on Kenjaku, her simple domain is completely stripped within seconds of its activation and she is pulverized by the attack. It is said that the Womb Profusion has a con to miss attack and I'm sure you guys know what that means. Anyways, its attack is much stronger than being directly hit with the maximum Uzumaki, however the nature of the attack we still don't know about. The aftermath of this attack would completely destroy Yuki's left arm 
and leave her all bloodied up, but it seems Master Tengen did in fact dispel Kenjaku's domain. But I don't think the full power of the Wound Profusion was used on Yuki. The reason for its dispelling would be because Master Tengen attacked the edge of the guaranteed hits area of effect. And also, we have to keep in mind, Master Tengen is the best at manipulating barriers, but Kenjaku wouldn't be far off from that title. So how is Wound Profusion on the top 4 if we don't know much about it? Well first things first, Kenjaku's domain is just like Sukuna's in a sense. Kenjaku is able to summon the Wound Profusion without an enclosed barrier, which only a few people can do. But on top of that, the attack in itself was inescapable, especially for someone of Yuki's calibre. It also completely ripped apart Yuki's simple domain in a matter of seconds, meaning a simple domain wouldn't really be a weakness for it. But the fact that it can do so much damage upon being summoned makes me believe that Kenjaku easily has one of the most powerful domains in the entire series. For me, the third most powerful domain expansion isn't something that you would expect. I understand Kenjaku's Wound Profusion is overpowered, but we are yet to see its true potential. So just about beating Kenjaku's domain would be Hikari's Idol Death Gamble, or in Japanese, Zasatsu Bakuto. This for me is the most confusing domain expansion, however once you truly understand its function, you realise that it is such a broken ability. Anyways, Hikari's Curse Technique and Domain Expansion work hand in hand together. So Hikari's Domain Expansion takes the form of a pachinko game, like an arcade game, but for gambling. Anywho, this game which was shown to us had a theme of a romance manga series called Private Pure Love Train. Hikari's goal within this domain would be to hit the jackpot by lining up three of the same symbols decorated with the characters of Private Pure Love Train. The jackpot bonus grants the user unlimited cursed energy and a fully automatic reverse curse technique for 4 minutes and 11 seconds. This would be the duration of the Private Pure Love Train theme song, Admiring You. So for 4 minutes and 11 seconds, Hikari literally becomes immortal. So for Hikari to hit this jackpot he must participate in the flow of the game, with only a 1 in 239 chance of doing so. All the rules of this game are transferred into the opponent's brain through the domain's short hit effect. This process is harmless and as a trade off, the construction and curse technique infusion of this domain are extremely fast activating in less than 0.2 seconds. This also makes Idle Death Gamble very effective in a clash of domains. So technically speaking, a simple domain would be sort of ineffective if Hikari hits a jackpot and just takes you head on with his ability of immortality. During his battle against Kashimo, even though the odds of Hikari getting a jackpot was 1 out of 239, he was constantly getting them due to the increased probability. So what I see is, once you get caught within Hikari's domain, you must play by his rule and there is no escaping. The amount of times Hikari can summon his domain expansion too is insane, but luckily for Kashimo's case, he managed to rip off one of Hikari's hands to prevent him from using the hand seal in order to summon the idol death gamble. So the reason why Hikari's domain expansion is in the top 3 is self explanatory. Immortality for just over 4 minutes, reverse curse technique being amplified to the max and functioning automatically and on top of that making each of Hikari's attacks incredibly powerful. So that's why for me it's the top 3 most powerful domain expansions around. So we are now down to our top 2. The second strongest domain expansion to grace the Jujutsu Kaisen universe would have to be Satoru Gojo's Unlimited Void or in Japanese Murio Kusho. Murio Kusho. From the latest chapters in the manga, I think we all know why Gojo's domain would rank as number 2. From what we understand about Gojo's unlimited void is that once the victim has been trapped inside the domain, there's no use fighting back at all. For example against Jogo, once Gojo overpowered Jogo's domain, it left the cursed spirit in a state of disarray and completely paralysed. This domain expansion brings Gojo and his targets inside the limitless itself, a vast void of infinite knowledge. Boundless raw information floods into the victim's mind, overwhelming them to the point where they're completely immobilized. Nanami had even stated that the unlimited void is an almost guaranteed win once it ensnares its target. So with that mentioned, why is it the second strongest domain? For this, we will need to analyse the most recent battle with Ryom and Sukuna, where the Unlimited Void was simply no match for the Malevolent Shrine. It would be narrated that both the Malevolent Shrine and Unlimited Void are evenly matched in terms of their power, but unfortunately for Gojo, he needs a barrier for his domain to truly take effect. So in the sense of a domain clash, 
Sukuna wipes the floor with Gojo due to the fact that the Malevolent Shrine needs no barrier and encapsulates Gojo's barrier and destroys it from the outside. But regardless of that weakness on Unlimited Void's part, Gojo is still the strongest character in the series, but it's that one tiny flaw which makes Unlimited Void the second strongest domain in the series. Before we unveil the strongest domain expansion in Jujutsu Kaisen, let's go over the honourable mentions and domains which are incredibly powerful but unfortunately are no match for the top 5 on this list. First would be Higuruma's deadly sentencing. This would be similar to Hikari's since Higuruma's curse technique and domain expansion coincide with one another. The fact that Higuruma can take you to trial and if you are found guilty and sentenced to execution, then Higuruma can use his executioner's sword and with a single slash, it can kill you instantly. On top of that, the victim will have all their cursed energy sucked away from them. Another domain expansion which deserves to be mentioned is Dagon's Horizon of the Captivating Skander, a domain in which creates a lovely seaside, however it grants Dagon the power to use several fish like Shikigami with a sure hit effect. Not only that, but he can also control the water inside of this domain. The last domain expansion I would like to mention is most certainly Megami's Chimera Shadow Garden. Although it is incomplete, the power it yields is like no other. You could even group Megami with Sukuna and Kanjaku simply because of them not needing to use barriers to activate their domains. Although Megami's one is still premature, the ability to create clones from the shadows and even summon an abundance of his Shikigami makes his domain expansion one to look out for in the future. So now down to the strongest domain expansion in this series, that would of course be Ryomen Sukuna's Malevolent Shrine or in Japanese Fukuma Mizushi. There are so many things which makes the Malevolent Shrine the most powerful amongst all the other domains. It's also very fitting for the King of All Curses to have such an overpowered finisher. What we know about the Malevolent Shrine is that it takes the form of a Buddhist shrine which again is befitting for someone like Sukuna. However, this isn't just any normal shrine, due to the fact that it has three mouths and an endless trail of skulls and bones surrounding it. We can also see various horns popping out from the shrine, but what makes things even more devastating is that Sukuna needs no barrier to summon this otherworldly domain. So what effect will it have on its victim once they are trapped within Sukuna's domain? Malevolent Shrine's guaranteed hit will relentlessly slash apart anything until nothing remains aside from Sukuna himself within its effective range with two types of slashing attacks, dismantle and cleave, and only stops when it disappears or when Sukuna is so badly injured he cannot sustain the domain anymore. Sukuna can set which of the two attacks to use against specific types of targets such as using dismantle for inanimate objects and cleave for things with cursed energy. What makes the Malevolent Shrine the most powerful? That would definitely have to be the fact that Sukuna needs no barrier for it to function. When he had summoned it in Shibuya, it was stating how Sukuna forging his domain without a barrier is exactly like an artist painting a masterpiece without a canvas but instead on air. This would also be classed as a truly divine technique. Through a binding valve, Sukuna can use a maximum radius of 200 meters, meaning anything within the 200 meter radius stands absolutely no chance, just as we had witnessed in the Shibuya incident arc. Even in the most recent chapters in Jujutsu Kaisen concerning the ongoing battle between Sukuna and Gojo, Sukuna completely enveloped Gojo's domain and destroyed it from the outside, so this in itself puts Sukuna's domain above Gojo's. Now the final reason as to why Malevolent Shrine is indeed the strongest is due to Sukuna's efficiency on how he uses it. The effortless nature of the domain to completely slice you up into pieces which makes Gojo's survival even more surprising, but we also don't know its full potential yet. For example, the function of the shrine's mouths and if it has something to do with Sukuna's curse technique. Anyways, Malevolent Shrine is a testament to true Jujutsu. We saw how well it did against the Unlimited Void, but what about a domain clash against the other four? The most interesting one would be against Kenjaku's Womb Profusion, as they both need no barrier to contain its incredible power. As for how that will work, could cause both domains to simply collapse or even merge into something greater, turning the environment around everyone into literal hell. But of course, if the Malevolent Shrine were to come up against the self-embodiment of perfection, idle death gamble, deadly sentencing and her rising of the captivating scander, Sukuna would win by a landslide due to these domains needing a barrier to function. However, against Megami's Chimero Shadow Garden, it might even struggle, who knows. But anyways, Malevolent Shrine is your ultimate winner. Fukuma Mizu. 
So that was the top 5 most powerful domain expansions for me. Hakari's Idol Death Gamble has got to be my favourite, but I know you guys will be killing me for this ranking, so let me know which domain expansions are the 5 most powerful in your opinion down below. As always, like this video and subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you all in the next one.